based on the fact that Vince isn't in charge, then maybe somebody sees something different or allows something else to happen or allows him to be him. And I think Triple H has a better understanding of Eric than Vince ever would have. Then maybe he'll have that confidence, but hopefully he's not so, I don't know, PTSD from the last run that he's afraid to do what he can do. All right, let's talk about uh, uh, Eric Rowan cutting a uh, VHS uh, tape and all these VHS series that are coming in. Uh, now the Pat McAfee show uh, to show on Raw. Uh, Eric Rowan talking about uh, his two, unfortunately, you know, deceased brothers now, Bray Wyatt uh, and Brody Lee, uh, formerly known as Luke Harper in the, in the WWE. So since you share the locker room with Eric Rowan, uh, and I've interacted uh, with him as well multiple times. Um, what is he like in real life? And, uh, and for all you trolls, it says, and Chris has interacted with him previously. So just just relax. Uh, what what is what is Eric Rowan like in real life? Uh, Eric, uh, to you, EC to me. Oh, he's a he's a real life Viking. He's a real life Viking with a off brand sense of humor, but a a good man with a good heart. He's a good hand. He's got a big beard. He brings the goods when he works. He's <laughs> again off-brand sense of humor, but very funny yeah. and very he's he's a pleasure to be around. Yeah, yeah. He's, um, he's got a really off-brand sense of humor. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I've talked to I've I've talked to spoke with Aaron Roman many times. The man and, from uh, the north is what we called him in developmental. Originally, and <laughs> nice. he was very much like his background was very Viking based in everything he did. So, yeah, yeah he's cool. Eric's cool, man. Eric Roman is the type of guy who will be like, Hey, EC3, I'm gonna kill you today. Well, yeah, he'll I know. Like, <laughs> he'll be like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I fully expect it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like, and then, yeah. He'd, he'd look at you for a second and then it'd be like kind of awkward. And then he go, <laughs> yeah, exactly. and then he'd be like, I still think you're serious, but yeah, I think, I not. yeah, I think that laugh was to make me feel better, not uh, <laughs> not make it seem like you're joking. So you can throw a hell of a big boot. He can, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Uh, Vince, from your time seeing Eric Rowan, so we saw the the, the Bray Wyatt gimmick, we saw the uh, the Daniel Bryan type of heavy gimmick, which actually was a pretty cool uh, um, part, space for Eric Rowan. We also saw this cage stuff, and we saw the Bludgeon Brothers, and so just your overall just uh, thoughts on how WWE treated uh, Eric Roman before coming back. Yeah, you know, you know, it's funny, bro, because there really is a uh, sense of reality towards the angle mm -hmm. because they, they, there were a lot of very, very talented people that I think creative failed mm -hmm. a, a, a lot of them. And, and I'd really like to hear that real story. Yeah. I, I would really like to hear from Eric, and we'll never get this side of it, obviously. I would really love to hear from Eric Rowan of how did they fail him and why did they fail him and what happened. And the same with uh, Sam Shaw. Like, EC3 worked with him. Like, how do you, I, I don't know, bro, if if I'm a writer and I'm a creative, a creator and a producer and you have talents like this, Bro, you just ride these talents. Like these talents tell you what they're good. Like you just you you go bro with Steve Austin and Rock. You go along for the ride. Mm -hmm. So when you've got such talented people and and it goes terribly wrong, I don't know how that happens, Chris. AC3, maybe you do. I don't know how that happens. Check out Brain Buster, the daily quiz that tests your WWE knowledge with winning streaks, stats, and more. It's time to see if you're up for the challenge. I mean, in my brief amount of creating for others, what I've, I mean, I've been on the other side, so maybe I have, you know, the war wounds to speak of it, but it's really you find what somebody's strength is and you let them run with it. And it's not effing brain surgery. It's not rocket science. It's not rocket surgery. It's not brain science either. So 
We have this big, gigantic, Viking-looking mf -er with a sweet beard who kicks people and has this off-brand sense of humor. Very easy to find a spot. Sam Shaw, a very talented artist who can paint pictures and like works very well and has this like deadpan Dexter kind of quality to him. Okay, he's a serial killer. Not hard to plug people in and put them in scenarios where their characters can grow and thrive. Mm. It's just like, I think when you, when people like to be tyrannical and play God with, because it becomes that narcissistic within wrestling and that naive that you have true power when you're just creating fiction with people's real life personalities, it, it, you have the tendency to want to micromanage or overmanage, but then there's other people's whose careers are on the line for the success of others. So they want to manipulate this or they want to change that. And the worst thing about it being a talented person when it comes to uh, creative people is everybody's telling you a different idea and you mm -hmm. feel until you learn, you feel obliged to appease each and every idea that comes your way. Because at the end of the day, the only idea and vision that really matters is the person on top. And then second is your self-fulfillment in pursuing the idea. So there's a lot of noise that goes around where maybe you become confused because one person's telling me this and this person's telling me this and this person's a creative, this person's a writer, this person's a writer, this person's a producer. And there's no true hierarchy short of one man on top, appease him, your checks will get bigger. Hmm. Yeah, and it's like, you know, Chris, when, when you're writing this stuff and you're creating this stuff, bro, there are so many people you know need help. Sure. And that's why when somebody comes along that gets it, it's like it's like just a weight off your back because you know they get it. They know what to do. I got to go work with the other people that really, really need help. That's why when I look at this list of talent, I'm like, how do, how do you miss, bro? Yeah. It's yeah putting somebody giving them a direction or like Vince might relate to this, but you have a conversation, you get to know the talent, their strengths, their weaknesses, their personalities, kind of their flaws, their foibles, their real life story. You, you toy with them and you just kind of like toss some ideas around and Vince can attest to this on our podcast yesterday. There's this kid training with me at the co-op who I couldn't really figure out what to do with. Like, I'm like, there's something there. There's something there somebody threw something at him, like just like he started doing this like hillbilly white trash kind of talk and I, my eyes just lit up and i'm like do that more do that more and then before i went into training i texted him you'll be over forever if you show up in character today with what you've been practicing and he showed up and this wife beater flannel shirt cigarette in his mouth full sugar monster energy cut off jean shorts hillbilly looking dude and i'm doing the podcast with vince and i hear him coming in cutting promos i'm like get in here vince saw him for 35 seconds he was laughing his ass off like so it's not that hard to just get to know and humanize somebody right and create a own but you know what the thing is though bro uh chris what ec3 bro there is such a huge difference when you give them a vote of confidence oh, yeah. compared to make them constantly second guessing themselves yeah. that, bro you you don't know the difference like oh, it's night and day when you tell somebody man that's it keep doing that you did a great job phenomenal you're laughing at the stuff they do and then the guy that you know ec3 is talking about that second game ah, maybe you shouldn't do that ah, maybe you shouldn't do that ah, bro Oh my God, that comes into play so much, man. It's so important, bro. He's just yeah. Support. yeah, after training, and we, I mean, he practiced. I blew him up. He's sweating profusely, dying in the high heat, bumping his ass off in jeans and a flannel shirt the whole day. And like, you know, just after practice, it's as simple as like a slap in the back. And like, I'm proud of you, man. Good job. And mm -hmm. he's the next day I was writing the show and I sent him like I had no intention of doing anything with him. Now, like, here's this big segment for your debut, like all just because of a conversation and then yep. the yep. simple act of way to go, dude. Yeah, yep. really, really good points there. You know, let's let's, you know, transition that into the WWE product. 
where do you think like, and we've talked about this before when it comes to just the overemphasis on matches versus characters how is this time for eric rowan going to be different than the other times they didn't you know they weren't successful with the eric rowan character say in six to nine months i would say briefly based on the fact that vince isn't in charge then maybe somebody sees something different or allows something else to happen or allows him to be him. And I think Triple H has a better understanding of Eric than Vince ever would have. Then maybe he'll have that confidence, but hopefully he's not so, I don't know, PTSD from the last run that he's afraid to do what he can do. Yeah. I'm, I'm live. I'm, I'm a live show. We're live, pal. <laughs> gotcha. Okay, that was my wife. Bro, do what Al Snow does. When when Al Snow's wife walks into walks into the shot like that, Al goes to his wife, bro. Give the Chris is too cool to do that, bro. Chris won't give the wife the kissy poo, huh, bro? On camera. Uh, yeah. If you just she just decided to interrupt, her best, but she did it. She. Well, she's teasing me. Uh, she had a rope on. But... Ooh, uh -oh. All right, let's hurry up. Okay. Enough, <laughs> enough, enough, boys. enough said. Enough said, Chris. <laughs> all right, here's a brain teaser. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> wow. yeah. Chris, that was, a little, little, that was a lot of revealing there. A little right? hey, nanny, nanny there. Yeah, very nice. All right. Uh, let's, uh, I, I have no idea what y'all are talking about. How it's going to be different for Eric, and I just said without Vince there. Oh, yeah, Eric Rowan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what did you say at the very end as far as uh, Eric Rowan is concerned? I would say basically brief synopsis and without a Vince McMahon, who is so creative, was so out of touch by the end that maybe Eric, under new eyes, can realize his full potential. Nice, nice.